What's going on everybody? Welcome back to MD Fish Tanks. I'm MD and these are my fish tanks. Unfortunately guys, I'm gonna be starting this video with some bad news. Um, Captain's sick. I mean, you wouldn't believe it looking there, look, but it's got a bit of fin rot and I can't really work out why because I've tested the water, everything's coming back perfect. And the only thing I could put it down to is that a couple of weeks ago, I added some chemicals to the tank to get rid of some cyanobacteria that was lingering around. That worked a treat and there isn't any cyano now at all. I think he's on the mend and this is the result of that overdosing. But just to be sure, I've got some of the API uh, Melafix that I put on chocolate before when he got the cut. So I'm gonna add that in right now. Some people say that it's, it's all a big load of rubbish. It doesn't do anything, but you know, I've got it here and it doesn't, it won't hurt. So I might as well add it to the tank anyway. On the plus side though, look at how good the tank's looking. So if you remember last time I trimmed all the lindophilia and it looked a bit rubbish, but I told you it grows back really sort of dense and looking fluffy, if you like. I think that looks really good and it's in nice contrast to the Rotala Rotunda Folia. It looks a bit more rough. Now let's see if we can get Captain to come forward. Normally when I tap, he knows it means it's food time. He's still eating well, which is good. There he, here he comes, look. Let's get his food for him. So I feed him this stuff from Tetra. It's like a better mix. And he knows that I put it in this top corner here where there's minimal flow. Just like that, look. A couple of sprigs. He's still eating really well, see? And most of him looks good, but I know that that colour is not quite as vibrant as it has been. And just some of the edges look very rough. So it's not like disastrous, but I think he'll be okay. Look at his dorsal fin. It's got like a spiky bit to it. Oh, where's he going? I don't know if you can see it there. It's got like a spiky bit where some of it's worn through or sort of come off. There you go. You can see a good clip of it there. But I think he'll be all right. He's really active still and, and not struggling at all. So yeah, we'll just see how it goes. But yeah, the tank's looking awesome, isn't it? Oh, you will find with this Melafix, by the way, it does leave this little foamy bit at the top, but that does go away after a few water changes, which we won't be doing just for now. I want to give it a chance to work first, but yeah. Well, guess what everyone? I'm actually stood in the studio. Uh, there's loads of space, so much that right up to the end, it's touching my head there, <laughs> but you know, I won't need to be stood here, tanks will be here. But if you haven't seen the previous video where we built this, built it with my dad, go take a look. If you're new here, I've got a little video on that. Um, obviously that's gonna tie in nicely with this one because today I'm putting in the electrics. I'll see how far I get. I'm hoping to do a bit more than that. I'm hoping to get some insulation up as well. And then I want to put a nice sort of boarding over the top of that to give a nice clean finish. Real nice hardwood floor down. The color scheme of this studio is going to be, some of it's going to be the same as the other one, but I'm going to make other sections a little bit different, you know, just so we've got like zones if you like. So I don't know, I just think on camera, it'll be more interesting to have the different areas and we can put different sort of fish or types of tanks in certain areas. I just think that'll be a bit more interesting rather than just full on black everywhere. Obviously we still need to have our black because that is the sort of look that I've got going on, the branding, all of that. So, But we need to crack on now with the electrics because I can't do anything about light. I've currently just got like a, whoa, that's bright. I just look straight at it. <laughs> just like a portable light, just, just hung up, just giving us some light at the moment. I'm gonna put three nice lights up on the roof and then I'm gonna do five plug sockets all the way around the whole place, double sockets. So then I've got one for just like permanent uh, extension leads for like, you know, filters, that sort of thing, heaters that stay on. And then I have another extension lead plugged in that'll be for lighting so I can switch off all the lights in one area with just one button, which makes it just much better for being able to film individual tanks. To better go around and press like three switches rather than, you know, pressing all the tanks. So that takes forever, it does your head in. But yeah, let's crack on. Okay guys, we have electrics. I mean, obviously everything's all loose at the moment, but we've got a wall, <laughs> we've got full electrics, uh, we've got lighting either side. I might add a third one. 
not sure yet. Anyway, lighting either side. I've got plugs all the way around as well, so really making a move now. Okay, so I'm not gonna go into full details about electrics. At the end of the day, I'm not qualified to do that, and there's plenty of videos out on YouTube already just to give you simple instructions on how to do a nice circuit. It's not complicated, but if you aren't sure on this stuff, you should just get a professional to do it. But again, you know, it's not so I wanna be liable for you guys potentially not doing, so you'll have to look that up elsewhere, I'm afraid. It's easy though. So I'm picking flooring. There's so much to choose from. This would be the cheapest option because it's this much per square meter and I would only need six packs of that price but I mean I like it don't get wrong it's good it's good quality and it's nice and thick what's that like that's at least like five mil so it'll add structural floor stability and what have you but then I really like this dark one which is more expensive it'll be about 200 quid to cover the whole floor but I think it's gonna be worth it because that'll look awesome and what's you know probably gonna cost me an extra I'm gonna go it's probably gonna be double to do it in that but I think I like that better and the floor is slightly thicker I think it's about seven mil so yeah I screw it it's worth the extra cost the dark floor will look really cool as well done and then of course we've got our cheap insulation for the underneath the floorboards or the expensive stuff again it pays dividends to get the more expensive stuff in heating later on plus to keep my toes nice and warm <laughs> Whilst on me, I've just noticed this laminate cutter as well. <laughs> that looks like it's going to do a nice easy job to be fair. And it's 20 quid. I was going to buy some horses, you know, like uh, to put the board on to cut across with like the jigsaw and all that. But pff, that's the same price. It's going to save me a ton of time. I'd say that's well worth the money. So I'm at Wix, which is like UK equivalent of Home Depot. And... Um, so this is the insulation board that I'm going to use. 25 mil thick, it's huge look. <laughs> Big sheets of it, and it's on offer for seven quid at the moment, which is like $10 or something. So I'm going to be able to do the whole of that shed now for under hundred pound, $120, which is pretty damn good, I think. So I don't know how I'm going to fit this in the car. I haven't thought of this. <laughs> I might have to cut it up a bit. It's going to make a hell of a mess. Yeah, that's right, it's worth it. Okay guys, so I've stood in the car park or the, the parking lot as you guys would call it. Cut it all up by hand into the smallest manageable sizes. I've made hell of a mess, mind you. I hope I don't get in trouble. <laughs> what I will get in trouble with though is that this is the wife's car and it's filthy. <laughs> Next thing to do, I want to show you guys how I would insulate the panelling. So let's do that. The things you're going to need for doing the insulation is insulation board. This is 25mm thick. Whoops. <laughs> a decent Stanley blade that can come right out, just means you can get right the way through as you cut. And then also a steel one meter rule, just because you can get nice good edges on it, but the edges don't have to be perfect, so don't worry too much, whatever you use, this is probably just the best, that's all. What we want to do then is just simply place your board up. You make a little cut as to where your start line is, and then a little cut to where your finish line is. And you take your steel ruler and you cut it. <laughs> Simple as that. Thing is, it takes time, is you've got to do it everywhere. But, you know, I better get started. Right, guys, I think that that's a good place to actually leave it today. So, you know, we've got almost a full wall done with insulation. And you know, you can see actually, it, it doesn't take too long once you get a good rhythm and system going, it's up, up in no time. Also, I just want to explain to you about an idea I had a while ago, I explained it before in another video actually, it's Rainbow River, which is what I want to do in this section here. So this is right in the middle of the studio. So 120 centimeter tank is that long. So it'll come out about this far, so still plenty of room to come in the door and you'll be greeted with a side-on view. So we're gonna have it split in the studio into two halves. So we've got this side and that side and then the nice big rainbow river in the middle. And this is the one that I wanna have the water just constantly flowing around it in a circular motion, like really fast, river pebbles. We get some rainbow fish in there. I think that's gonna be really cool. Loads of plants coming out the top as well, aqua terrarium style. But we'll leave the building part of the video done here because at the end of the day, this is a fish tube channel. Let's have a look at some fish, shall we? The other day I showed you the video inside of my indoor tanks 
and in that video I trimmed a lot of them so by the end of it they all looked a bit rough but they've all grown back in looking really good now so let's just have a quick look at that. So the other day guys you all saw me doing some maintenance on this tank and giving it a good trim I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update and show you you know how well it's grown back in already it's looking so good with all those vibrant colours glass looking super clean and everything all tidy no surface scum I just love it I think this tank is awesome. I am gonna to have to break it down though, that's the problem. Because when I move this whole tank into the studio, because this is gonna be my desk area, yeah? I was gonna have a desk area out in the studio, but I thought, you know, I spend quite a lot of time editing, and if I'm out there doing fish stuff and the editing side of things, I'm never gonna see the family, what with that and work, you know? So if I have a nice desk area here, look, you know, in that area, then I'm still with the family and doing everything with them. So I think that's the best bet, but yeah. Let me know what you guys think if you like it as well. I can rebuild something like this again, but you know. Oh, my daughter's awake. One minute. It's me. 